Hey! Hello! Welcome to this most miraculous of days where I've actually started on time for once. Hello, Sideways, Kirk, and Kenworth T908. How's it going? It's going good. How's it going with you guys? I am uh, waiting for the game to load. There! <laughs> Totally didn't go live without the game loaded. No, that that's totally not like me. Because I realized it was 5 o'clock and knew that there was very little setup to be done and I could just go live with the game not fully loaded. Um. <laughs> Sideways talking about it being a different Dave as I'm talking about not having the game fully loaded. Um, hello, Bradley. How's it going today, dude? The game will eventually load. This is it, it, it's literally the same one as yesterday, Anis. Um I I literally changed none of the stream info for today. But hey, it's working now. I'm in game. Hello Fear the Deer and Alex. Hopefully we won't have the same kind of issues we had yesterday. The um, plan for today is effectively the same as yesterday, just get some harvesting done. Um, and ideally without uh, horrific um, frame drops and lag. That is kind of the, the idea. And I'm hoping it uh, works out. Because I did reboot the internet after the stream yesterday, so if it's not working out, I have absolutely no idea how to fix it. It's buffering for you. Oh, please, no! Not again. Hello, Pa. How's it going today, dude? Not again. Please, not again. I'm doing good, uh, Pa. for asking. Fine for Bradley and Steve. No buffer for Alex. Might just be on your end, Ozzy. And, um, in the nicest possible way, I sincerely hope it is. What's going on? Ah. Uh, you missed yesterday's stream power. There was just insane amounts of, like, try, um, Try reducing the resolution of your stream, Kenworth. That might help. It might, it might not. Genuinely unsure about the uh, correct course of action for you to take. But it's, it's worth a shot at least. Oh my god, no, not again. Shep, Dash Beyonce is meeting in Kuala Lumpur for today, doing a job, meeting, and he gets home at 1 in the morning, so you stay up to sleep. That is really nice of you, Kenworth. Fine now. The problem is, I don't know how to fix this if it is a genuine issue with my internet. Short of shouting at my ISP again. And having them do nothing. Suffering. You're kidding me. Dude, that means the world to you? That is really nice to hear, Kenra. Sign now for you, no buffering. Steve's had no buffer. It's a chance to just... Yeah, I'm seeing, like, no drop frames. And usually when there's a mass buffer, I do see drop frames. YouTube's saying everything's fine as well, so... I think it is YouTube's end. Um, 
kind of hope it is. Am I using controller or a wheel? Um, I'm using controller. I'm feeling particularly lazy the last little while. I've been using controller a lot. Um, just because the wheel takes so much effort to set up for just like two hours of use. Because like straight after streams I need to take the wheel back down when I've got it set up. And it's a faff and a half and blah. Uh, Steve, I'd just like to point out that I use Wi-Fi to stream. Come on. Oh, for the love of... There's literally 500 litres of canola stuck in the harvester. What happened to Project Hell? Um, lack of interest happened to Project Hell. Um... I didn't see the point of streaming to like three people on a Sunday, uh, so I have uh, dropped it as an idea. Have I got this quality? Yeah! Although, looking at the number of viewers I've got, this might not be a very long stream. Quick reminder, by the way, Landy is not streaming today. He's got a meeting to go to. Um, I think he's actually in the meeting right now. Last I heard, he was uh, arriving there, I think, or nearby. What's the replacement for Project Hell? Um, the replacement for Project Hell is I've just moved the X-Blade streams to Sundays. Very quiet indeed, Alex. Um, mine has 50 down, 20 up, to be honest, in theory. So that's the majority of the uh, canola in. How much canola do we now have in storage? 79,000 liters. I think about it in. I've been seeing, yeah, I've been seeing the, the stream flashing a bit. Yeah, no, there's buffering. It's buffering again. I'm wondering, hey ASB. I'm wondering if the issue isn't explained. Because I remember I had a similar issue to this the first time around I was using explain. On time, yes, but that doesn't seem to have helped the stream at all. Um, it may end up being very, very short indeed. Um, I need to uh, do some serious thinking about where to bring the channel from here. Um, because it's not good for my mental health to have like basically no viewers after all of the effort and time I put in, so I need to figure out what the hell to do. Am I thinking it's expert? I think it's possible. I mean, it's as possible as anything else. Um, 
see, the problem with doing lo primarily low note because I don't want people to be burnt out of the map before it's out. I don't want to ruin the map for people before it's even out, before they can even play it. Which is why I've gone primarily back to Oakfield. Um. Pay the internet bill? Well, it's a direct debit, so yes. Hope the brown comes on PS4. It won't, from what I understand. Macaulay. As Lizard. Um, I don't know if C or 4D will be able to do that. Um, in theory, he should be allowed. Hey, Jag. It's going much the same as yesterday by the looks of it. Really badly, then. It's unfortunate, but I don't want to be the cause of people being bored of Lone Oak. That's kind of my outlook on things. I would rather play a map that's already out that people can play along with than to do nothing but Lone Oak. Oh, is the Torian out? I do not have it. Um, I didn't know it was out. I haven't checked the mod up today. I've been too preoccupied with hoping the damn stream would actually work. Which looks like that was in vain as well. It's out. Uh, John, do you guys want me to just stop the stream and download the Torion real quick? Try switching DS server. That would take like 10 minutes. Anything that involves me switching my internet takes like 10 minutes. No, it's my internet provider as always. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, hang on. I don't know what I'll do with the Torium, but I'll download it. Uh, the class DLC, as far as I know, has the, um... Anything else interesting came out today? I, di I didn't actually look. This is... My excuse to look at what mods came out today, I guess. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the, the DLC will have a, like at least one forager. Is that all the info that YouTube's gonna give me? That's. Oh my God! It is my internet. I am. Fairly sure it is my damn internet. Um, let's see if it fixes itself. The 960 TT is the only option for the 960. There is no 9 960 standard. Um, I've seen plenty of leapers. Mainly, like, mainly excavators, but I've seen tons of leapers. Is the internet a pooper? It looks like it. Farming boy, that would take. You don't seem to understand. That would take, like, 20 minutes. The problem is the router, and my ISP is not willing to fix the router. 
That is the in entire problem. I don't have money. Oh. Let's have a look at this thing. Change ISP, that's not an option. It's the only ISP in the area that actually provides decent speeds. Upgrade my router, again not an option, they don't provide any upgrades. And even if we were to buy a new one and send them the uh, invoice, they wouldn't pay. Who's my ISP? Air. They're just terrible. I wish we had actually decent um, internet providers around here, but they're the only ones that actually have even vaguely good speeds. Farm void, trust me, I've thought of every conceivable option. There is none that will work um, to solve it. Other than just hounding them, which is my plan. I'm, li I'm liking the Toria. Try three mobile. Yes, because mobile internet will totally fix the problem and not be horrifically unreliable. Considering I live on top of a mountain. Speed isn't... Speed isn't the issue farming, but it's reliability. You can have the world's fastest internet, but it could, it could be unreliable as hell and be completely worthless. But it is, it literally is Kenworth, the lead pair wheel loader. Um, in real life, it's literally just repaint. That said, I think it's really well modeled and really well made, so. I will um, probably use the Torian for a while. Yeah, I was, Yanis, I was just kind of thinking, why does this have, like, a rocket launcher as an exhaust? You could hide a nuclear weapon in this thing. Is that morning jungle grass? No. Armstrong isn't smart enough to, to do that. It'd be amazing if it was, but it's not. Just in case the Taliban invade Oakfield. She's heavy as well. 
She seems to be um, compact. Oh god, this is only 28% compacted. They got rid There's nothing I can do about it, Bradley. There's no point in telling me. Which is absolutely fine. I mean, if it doesn't sort itself soon, I'm just gonna call it again for the day, and quite possibly for the week, just to let my internet actually figure out how the hell it works. Because. I'm getting really, really frustrated. And, um... Struggling to see the point of continuing. Quite honestly. Right, let's, let's get, let's, let's get back to harvesting. If it'll let me tab to the harvester, there we go. There's all, the problem with the class cougar is there's always like a mod going around that's a class cougar, but it's always invariably terrible. It's from like FS17, or not even FS17, it's from like FS11. It's FS17, good lord. I'm gonna try to build my own farm and flat map. I've tried it with Giant's Editor in FS15 in FS and 17, Kenworth. Um. Because I find Giant Scissor is a lot more, a lot less user friendly, a lot easier to use. <laughs> it's a lot easier to try and work on a map in um, in Giant Scissor than in the game. The systems are very. Can I say dumped down? Like I feel like dumped down is being a bit crude about it, but. The they're definitely very simplified um, in game compared to um, Giant's Editor. You can you can get a lot more precision in Giant's Editor um, than you can in the game. So I uh, like as great as I think it is that you can do that stuff in in the in in game now. I would. I still prefer. Whoa, whoa. I still prefer doing it in, in GE, even though I don't have GE for 19. I haven't downloaded because I don't want to grow down that damn rabbit hole again. That's the issue. Like the, the in-game tool by just for user. Friendliness has to be very simplified to work on a controller. Um, the problem there is that it doesn't have the precision that Giant's Editor does. And people who are used to Giant's Editor will, just aren't willing, including me, aren't willing to try and faff about with the in-game controls because they're nowhere near as precise and you can't, you can't do the same things. You can't put something on a hill. Like, you can't put a building on a hill and have it be tilted and wonky. You can't embed something in the ground slightly. It, it doesn't work as well. 
Um, and the fact that it just makes an absolute mess out of the terrain doesn't help when you place something down in game. Like, it, it just causes a mess. And it's not something that I try to use um, unless, uh, unless there's something I really, really want to mod in. Um, speaking of which, I forgot to, tr to activate the fermenter again. Dang it. Is the stream more reliable now on YouTube? It looks like it might be. I'm hoping it is. Because that'll kill the headache that's coming on. <laughs> It'll be very nice to hear the stream is actually gonna, you know, be reliable for a bit. Well, they're very cute rabbits, but they are not goats. Over a bit earlier. I'm not talking about earlier, Massey. I'm talking about now. Er earlier is headaches. I want to know about now to know if it's still headaches. <laughs> I think some people think I'm kidding when I say, oh yeah, that was giving me a headache. But no, it, it does. It genuinely does give me headaches. Oh my god. Hey James! How's it going today, dude? You only knew you were getting them an hour before you left. I mean, we didn't know we were getting cats until about three hours after we had them. Or, I say three hours. A few weeks after we, we the cats just started staying. Um, that was when we found out we had cats. I mean, you, you've seen the, uh, the saga of Kitten Count the last two years on Discord, so, you know, they, we don't know how many cats we actually have at any given time. We think now, by the way, that the mother of the entire litter of kittens that died is also now herself dead. Um because we haven't seen her for several months. Uh, we think she's either been dead or been ki um, or either died or been taken in by somebody and she'll reappear in like a year or so. Um, hey Maddie, how am I? Headachey. Headachey. The stream is going badly again. And I have zero control over it. I've done all I, all I can to fix it. It's just going to do what it does today. And that's about all I can say. You know, I, 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 I ask the people of patience when it does go a bit weird and starts buffering. Um, because I have no control over what it does. But like your neighbors. Cats are, no, cats are lovely. Cats get a bad rap. Because, like, people say, oh, cats are really unreliable. They don't trust people, and they, all they want is attention. All they want is to sleep and a bit of attention sometimes. And food. Like, you give a cat food, attention, and somewhere to sleep, they are going to be delighted. Finding your PC sorted? Good to hear, Maddie. Really good to hear. Cats are nice until they say. Ah, you see, the problem there, Yanis, is you're some, you shouldn't leave them in the house um, at night. 
Unless they're ca like so ill that they just all they want to do is sit in a corner quietly. Because um, we let that happen once by mistake. <laughs> Everybody forgot the cat was in. I came down for the loo at like 4 a.m. and I was like, why is the cat there? He's asleep. I'm not putting him out. Hey, local cheats. They kill everything and put in vegetable patches. Well, they, they are natural predators, Massey. That is kind of a thing that they do. I'd love to know why those, that one, maybe two squares of terrain just are not allowing crops to grow. You have a cat, she's called Larry. <laughs> We, uh, our cats are called, um, and this will show our ingenious way of calling them. We've got a ginger cat called Ginger. Um, a tabby cat called Tabby. Another tabby called Gulliver. Um, the mother of most of the cats who's called Mama. Uh, the one that's missing who looks a lot like Mama but is fatter and we call her Mini Mama. Um, there's the white one, which we're kind of... We're kind of thinking about calling that one just the cloud because it has the softest paws in the world when it starts pawing at you. Um, we've got a kitten that my sister is insisting on calling Lucky because it's the only one that actually survived. Um, we have a really fluffy black and white call cat called Fluff. Um, a not so fluffy black and white cat uh, called Spot. And I'm trying to think of the others, if there are any. I don't think there are any others. But yeah, the cat names are just like references for us. But, uh, oh, we also have a, another ginger cat. I almost forgot this one. We've got another ginger cat who is called Chicken. And my sister's friend has a tabby that, that is chicken's, I think, brother, uh, called Chips. And the reason that they're called Chicken and Chips is because they were always together when they were little teeny kittens. And they, they uh, went together like Chicken and Chips. Game. The game got really offended by, what I, by that. You look at something, <laughs> that's your name. Pretty much, Janice, yeah. It's a lot of cats. Um, yeah, last count, there's like 14, but Mini Mama we think is gone for good. And as mean as it sounds, I kind of hope so, because she. That's not the first um, litter of kittens she's neglected. See, he's making good progress on the Lady Minga Harvester. I. I'm looking forward to that, but also not. I hope he, um... Because I know he's working on the Moros. I hope he's figured out a solution to the weight issue he had to put in from Boar last time around. Why don't we call him Ginger Cat's Garfield? That's, that's not original enough. Or too original. Plus, my sister's the one that names the cats, so I'm not the one to ask. Literally have a goat called Goat. Hey, SFTN. How's it going today, dude? Okay, good, good news. My internet does seem to be vaguely working now. Bad news, I legit have a headache now. <sighs> I just can't. I just can't grab a break this week, can I? Cannot, cannot get a break. As intro is well enough. Yes. Um, slightly better than yesterday. But not by much.
You know, that's Jack Russell's called Jack. Wanna get food? Enjoy, Yannis? I have like two or three and I can't remember where they are. I have a few stress balls and I can't remember where the hell they are. I've got the stress horse. Hang on. I have a stress horse. From, uh, from Giants. It's actually really cute and adorable though, so I don't want to... I don't want to do a squeezy on the adorable horsey. best way for me to de-stress a bit. Where's the horse name? The horse doesn't actually have a name. This is like Rosie is the the cow of Farmson. The horse <laughs> The horse I don't think they named. Like, VF named his soft toy the horse, but I don't think the horse itself has a name. I'd love to know why just nothing worked in this area of the field. Because it's like, it's mirrored in the next field over, so it's a, a chunk that just failed to update for some reason. And I'm clueless as to why. Can you petition for it to be named Jeff? I was thinking Horace. Horus the Horus. Horus is a good name for a horse. Or uh, Hoof Hearted. Perfect name for a horse, especially a racehorse. In the horse area. It's not lame though. It's not that bad farming. But the poor horse. It's insulted. Is going pretty well. I'm, I'm not looking forward to uh, 
having to try and bail all of this, because the plan is to bail all, all of the straw for maximum cash monies. Hey, Spencer! The plan is to, to bail all the straw for maximum cash monies, and I'm really not looking forward to doing that. Horse? No, Horus. Horus. Or hoof hearted. Like hoof, hoof of a horse. And then he's got a big heart, so hoof hearted. Just don't, don't say that name very quickly. Whatever you do, don't say hoof hearted quickly. Tesco the horse. Yeah, we'll, we'll name the horse Tesco Burger. <laughs> oh, that's terrible, Jack. Morrison spaghetti bolognese. Tesco the Wonder Horse. Maybe I should name it in honor of Dagrin's horse. Um, from the time he was playing, I think it was Oblivion on, on his channel. And call it Depresso the Magical Wonder Horse of Mystery. He actually didn't mind the horse meat. Horse meat is seen as like a delicacy in a lot of countries. It's it's only seen as taboo in like Ireland and the UK. Um I don't even know why, but I'm guessing it's because a lot of people historically in Ireland and the UK have horses for pets and stuff. Um, but in other countries it seems perfectly fine. Hey, simulating games. Call a crash should be at home while driving. That is not a bad call. How am I doing? Um, reasonably good. <laughs> I'm fine. Other, other than my headache. Which you see me reaching, just rubbing my temple here. Yeah, got a bit of a headache. Uh, from the earlier internet issues. But I'm fine otherwise. Take those pills. I generally. Actually, one of the Omega pit tablets? Yes. Medication, not so much. I don't like taking medication when I don't feel like it's actually necessary. And for a headache, actual legit medication, not necessary. There's no point in it. Same thing when I have a flu, I'll just have like... Well, well when I've got like a cold or a flu, because I know 90% of them are viral, I'm just like, what's the point in taking medication? All I'm doing... All, all I'm doing is putting chemicals into my body that don't need to be there. So I'll take... I'll take, like, stuff for headaches. Because they work. But only when I got a particularly bad one. This one's just annoying. When I got, like, a cold or flu, I'll just drink tea that has um, honey in it to soothe my throat. I'll use natural solutions that are proven to work. Because there's no point in taking medication for something that medication can't deal with. You guys been the best doctor in the world. See, the problem there, simulating games, is these tablets, which are taking the label off, are omega oils, which are mainly vitamin D. Um, 
it can help get more rest or you drink more it's just yeah treating the symptoms is great but when I know that I can treat the symptoms without medication this is my point when I know that I can treat the symptoms by getting more rest and by using more natural remedies that are proven to work like honey and tea to soothe the sore throat instead of taking um, Sudafed or something I'd be much happier <laughs> taking the more natural solution and just um, getting a bit more sugar into my body to uh, help deal with it. Not using the G27. No, I just can't be bothered, honestly. It's a lot of hassle to get it all set up, and I need to take it all back down once I've finished the stream. Because, like, after stream, it's pretty much dinner time, so I gotta get. The, I, I finish the stream, and then the wheel comes down immediately. There's no. Like, it goes up directly beforehand, comes down directly afterwards. And it's only set up for the two hours, and it's a faff. That if I had a much bigger desk, I wouldn't need to do, but I can't get a bigger desk into this room. That's kind of the root of the issue. You're in a good mood today? I'm in a bit of a man mood. I, like, I've been in better moods, but I've been in much, much worse. So I, I don't really know how to describe the, my mood of the day. It's just, <laughs> it's just like you're there. Me? Welcome back, Yanis, you fatty. Enjoy your food. Meh. Meh is probably a good way to describe how I feel today. <laughs> you say oi. Like, as, as if I can't talk about being fat. I've just realized I meant to sweep the floor downstairs and I never did. Whoops. You're in the exact same mood today, it's just one of those Yeah. You're only getting southern channels now, you're usually getting English channels as well. It's a bit odd, Foxtrot. Foxtrot, you use like Freeview or Serview or whatever it's called for you? Because I know the analog signal pretty much everywhere has never been turned off. You don't mean to be bossy, but could my face can be better in the top left? Because I can't see the capacity or the ridiculous speed ending. Um, no, because I want to hide the ridiculous speed ending. That's the entire point of this being the bottom, bottom right. Also, it covers up the fact that there's a big black bar at the bottom of the screen during explain streams. Um, like I don't, I don't think there's any. There's actually a good corner that I could... Why did I do this? Where am I going? Dave, Dave, turn around. Yes, I'm doing that. See, look, turning around. That was pointless.
How much oats do we have in storage already? It's gonna be like 60,000, isn't it? Oats. Oh, 28,000. 80,000 liters of canola. So, uh, we're, we're not gonna be short on money once we sell some of, some of the crop. In fact, I'm probably gonna rent a truck just to do that. Took too many of those tablets. Now, the, the problem simulating games is I just have a terrible memory. I've been, um... I've been working on some stuff lately and it... it kind of throwing facts and figures at me that I'm trying to remember um, what sheet of paper of the many that I've written it down on and uh, as a result I'm a bit more forgetful than usual so I'm trying to trying to prioritize remembering the like oh yeah yeah I Completely forgot that I'd filled the combine up again. Get this from around, get it brought down, or up, or across. I'm not entirely sure if the, the yard is above where I am, below where I am, or just directly across like hillsides. Let's get it over to the yard, either way. You a bit over happy? Um, possibly, yes. Just, just a touch. I find it funny, by the way, that um, Twitch chat has actually been more active today than YouTube chat. I find that kind of comical because it's usually the other way around. In Twitch chat, I forget about. Uh, what CPU do, do, do I use? I have. Uh, 4790K i7. Switch reigns supreme. Probably because Twitch is actually being more reliable than YouTube. I would imagine it has something to do with reliability. Just about enough room to turn around there. Good, nice seventy. I seven and ten seventy run FS nineteen. Good. Well, I ran up until a couple of months ago an i7 and a 980 and ran FS19 perfectly fine. Um, I'm still running the i7, but I've upgraded to a 2070 um, from Strix, so. Simple answer simulating games? Absolutely! 
Although, honestly, if you're not planning on streaming, go with an i5. i3s are kind of business. When, you, when you're looking at Intel, um, Intel CPUs, i3s are mainly for business and, like, just having a functioning computer. i5s are more in, into the gaming market, and i7s are the extreme performance. Or, I don't want to say extreme i7s are more the performance thing that streamers want. If you're not planning on streaming ever, go with an i5 because you'll save a bit of money and get pretty much the same performance. You won't notice a huge difference. Hey chat. How's it going today, dude? The, I, the i9 is for in, insane people with too much money. Um, I actually forgot that the i9 <laughs> existed. The i9 is for the guys who just care about having specs. And they're just like, I've got an i9 that can do 73 gigahertz. Well, great, but can it run Minecraft? Just went over Twitch, it's not your cup of tea at all. Fun fact, James! I prefer watching streams on Twitch. If I have a choice between watching a stream on YouTube and watching a stream on Twitch, I'll watch it on Twitch. I like the player more. You stream occasionally. Um, then toss a coin between the i5 and i7. Like, you can totally stream off an i5, I used to. The i7 just gets you that extra bit of performance. Biggest issue I have with Twitch is that their weird codec means they can't give everybody transcoding. Which is what YouTube does to give you the different um, resolution options. Twitch doesn't have that for everybody. So you gotta deal with whatever the streamer is streaming at, for the most part. Yeah, an i5 for you. Yeah, my, my initial PC, my original was an i5. The i the i7 is really just a little bump that is noticeable, but little that um, helps out with video processing and streaming. It, like it's it's not a world of difference. Ry Ryzen are cheaper, but the per core performance is less. Um, and in a lot of games, you'll actually want high per core performance. Learning videos in that time. See, the bigger difference you'll find for rendering is that is whether or not the uh, program you're using to render actually wants to work correctly. Because if I use Vegas to render, it's two hours every time, no arguments, no negotiation. If I use Premiere to render, or the Adobe Rendery thingy. Uh, Adobe Media Encoder, I think it is. It takes as little as, you know, 45 minutes for a half hour video. Uh, how's my day going? It's, it's going alright, Dovacity. Welcome back after a few days off, or a few weeks off YouTube. Hope you enjoyed your little break. Multitasking is rising strong point. True. Like, Ryzen does have that edge on Intel, the problem is the the games don't care about multitasking performance for the most part, especially those still running OpenGL, like Farms, like the majority of games. Um, uh, all they care about is single core performance, which Intel wins. Because um, Intel, Intel have always focused on the single core performance. And AMD, which are the group that make the Ryzen chips, work on multi-core performance. What top of the range i5 stream? Well, it would stream. I don't know if it stream as well as I said. Back to school today, but no, since you've been taking the last few have mother. What specs my PC running? Exclamation mark specs, Delvacity. Uh, Nightbot has them. 
Uh, oh, it's got a, it's got a date fix. Hang on. Uh, forty-seven ninety K at I think it's like four point seven gigahertz because I've turboed it. Uh, Thirty-two gigs RAM, a four terabyte I want to say hard drive, one hundred and fifty gig SSD basically just for Windows, um, and uh, twenty seventy eight OC from Strix. Um, which, as far as my research has shown, is the top of the line 2017. See you soon, games. Ivy Bridge i5 to copy like I said. I, I love how Intel named their stuff because it makes no sense. Like, they may as well bring out a, a, a processor called the Bingo Hazmat. Which totally is not a kernel failure reference. Um, hey, Saturday Gaming. How's it going today, dude? Oh, no, I haven't right today the first time. This is the tractor that I want. You would buy that. You would buy the Bingo Hazmat processor? What about um, a processor called, like, Optimal Jeff? <laughs> oh, yes, my computer's called the Optimal Jeff. Hello, Ron. How's it going today, dude? We're Oren. The distinct lack of a file on the A. Ryzen 5600 AMD, your X580. Making your. Um... I'm doing good. Uh, good to hear you're doing, uh, doing pretty good yourself. I'm just dealing with tiredness today because I got like. I have one of those nights where I like, slept for four hours, or less, it was probably less, now that I think about it. I slept for a few hours, and then woke up needing the loo, got annoyed at that, I went back to bed and slept for another few hours, and I'm just, I hate getting broken sleep like that, because I'm always tired the next day. Is work getting farms on PC? I'd say yes, just because of the, the wider variety of mods available than on console. Like, you can do a lot more with Fire Emblem on PC than you can on console. Straight up. Um, console, on average, have higher quality mods, but PC have more. So it's a real quantity versus quality argument. Do you want more mods or do you want better mods? On average. So, the console community have done more than people are willing to give the credit for. You know, console have brought a lot of money to Giants. Um, they're getting, they're allowing modders to get their mods out to more people than ever before. And I would argue the console community is there's a, is causing the average quality of a mod to increase overall, like especially on a uh, Giants model. I'm going to exclude mod site, other mod sites um, from that argument. But on Giants mod you know the average quality of a mod has shot up since since console. Um, and I think. You know, we have console to thank for that. I think we have console to thank for the game getting so much better and getting John Deere and getting class. Um, 
and the game making it to the mainstream. I mean, it's one of the launch titles for the damn Stadia. I was looking at the launch titles for the Stadia. It's up there with the like, Gears of War and all of these massive AAA games, and then there's Farming Simulator just in the middle of it all for no good reason. Yeah, consoles brought FarmSim from being this this meme in the simulator to this genuine, like, mainstream powerhouse of gaming. Um, and, it, you know, the popularity has never been greater in, in, for FarmSim. Um, the question is, is has FarmSim peaked? Has you know peak popularity already been hit for Farmson with 17 and 19 scared off or angered or whatever so many people that Farmson is just going to go downhill or something. You know I, I think FS17 might well be peak Farmson. But from each side of the mainstream, double A game. That's a good way to put it. It's, like either single or double A. I don't think it's full triple A, but it's definitely mainstream. It's it's accepted in the mainstream. Um, I'm in agreement with the ASP. Like 19 to play just feels a lot better than 17. But the the problem is, is the gameplay hasn't changed much. They've smoothed out some edges, but they haven't really. In terms of gameplay, they taking a step forward with 19. I think, you know, at best it was a step sideways or kind of jumping up and down in, in place in terms of gameplay. Um, they're not going to be able to get away with that for 21. You know, 21 is going to have to be a very gameplay focused game because there's no brand they can bring in at this point that'll sell the game. They're gonna have to work on getting new gameplay features, whether it be seasons, whether it be orchard farming, whether it be, you know, something. It, it needs to be something that changes how the game plays and how the game feels. Um, Like, they can't just introduce a new animal or, like, two new mechanics to how crops grow and think that that's enough for 21. It was enough for 19, barely enough, because they had John Deere. Like, John Deere was the big thing. Um, there needs to be a big overhaul for 21. They need to go something as big... I would argue, uh, if not bigger than uh, the decision 15, which I didn't agree with, but you know it's worked out well for them. As big as forestry coming into the game, as big as the BGA being added back in FS11, um, they need to do something big for 21. Mainstream, that too, yes. Like. The mainstream market demands things change every time there's a new version, unless it's called FIFA. Because um, FIFA just says, it's a new way to kick a football in the game! Well, great, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just the same game as you brought out last year with slightly changed artwork. The F1 games are just as bad. Like, it's not just EA. It's any sport game that comes out annually. It's just like... It's different because we've added an animation of a man doing a thing with his foot. And that is new. So you should totally buy our game for $60. It is totally a $60 animation. <laughs> they all do diversity. Um, F1 does it. You know, UFC does it. 2K do it with basically all their games, whether it be WWE or NBA or I think they do an NHL game as well, or at least did. 
Yeah, any game that comes out annually is just like, we have added two new animations and this one tiny thing that you might only notice because we have told you to notice it. That is your new game. You shall now worship us. And I'm just saying, like, no. It's effectively the same game that you brought out five years ago. <laughs> the Giants do add decent changes. Like, I'm, I'm making fun of the AAA guys. Giants have added some pretty good changes to the game. I think they need to push a bit harder for 21. Um, the mainstream market won't accept small changes like arguably what happened in 19 gameplay wise um, it needs to be a quite large gameplay overall and it needs to be the game that focuses on the gameplay um, and how it feels and how it works and maybe not so much how it looks I'd be fine if they kept the same graphics for 21 I don't think there's much of an improvement that you can get out of this graphics engine apart from maybe having another look at the clouds because the clouds need another look at I think um, volumetric clouds are difficult to do because that happens sometimes volumetric clouds don't work correctly and they just become pixels I don't think you get 21, it does not a great deal change. Yeah, that's the problem, like... I, I'd almost prefer... The Vasily Seasons would be a massive gameplay change. This is this is what I mean, like, Seasons would be one of those massive changes the Giants could bring in, and people, it would appease people. Um, the problem Giants face over CG Project Red is that Giants is much more niche. Like, there is the mainstream acceptance of Farm Sim now, but it's still a very niche game. And it's hard. And, um, they can't get away with bringing out a game every two years. Number one, focus on one, let them. Or every, you know, once or twice a decade. They, they won't. Focus on one, let them bring out a game that rarely. It's focus on Big Seller 2. Um, and number two, Giants wouldn't be able to get away with having many more DLCs than they already have. Because, like, y you guys see the reactions in the Facebook groups, in the YouTube comments, in, in stream chat. And, just across the community about every new DLC where like one part or another of the community is up in arms that their favorite thing isn't in the DLC and like I'm guilty of this too like I didn't see uh, I don't like the John the um, the cotton DLC I think it's overly focused on one machine I think DLC should be a bit more um, it should have a bit more mass appeal. And that's why I, I like the Anderson DLC, because it's got a bit of something for everybody. But I don't like the Cotton DLC, because it's effectively just for people who really like doing Cotton. Which is something that I really don't like in the game. Um, that's why I like class, because like, even if you don't like class, it's more machinery. If you don't like class, but you like having varieties in your maps, well, there's more machinery, there's more stuff coming in. It's a glimpse into what FS21 might look like. Um, the deer, yeah, the cotton DLC was a missed opportunity because they could easily, and I would argue should, have made that just a John Deere DLC. Get John Deere to agree to a few classics going in and bring out a DLC that, granted, has the Harvester. Has everything that, you know, the Cotton DLC has. 
But maybe throw in like a 7810 or an 8530 or something. Something that would have had more mass appeal than a cotton harvester and equipment to go with it. That's where, for me at least, the cotton DLC kind of fell a bit flat. It was, it was, um, it was overly focused on one aspect of gameplay that not everybody is going to like. It, yeah. I'm always going to have negative opinions for stuff that doesn't suit me, so I'm as biased as anybody else on that front. But, considering I don't generally like... Niche DLC just doesn't work. That's kind of the harder. Like, I loved the Marshall DLC back in FS11. But, or FS13. But looking at it now, I think it was FS13 the Marshall stuff came in. Looking back at it now... It was way too niche. It was like, it was equipment from one company that only really does business in one, maybe two countries. Like, at best you'll find Marshall stuff in Ireland and the UK. I don't think you'll find it in mainland Europe. Um, Ursus, I think, was a better DLC for 13, because it, like, there was mass appeal, there was interesting stuff in it. Because um, that brought in base game bail wrapping. But, yeah, there's always one or two DLCs. Big Bud, I think, has the same issue. Where it's like, it, it's catering to people who only want... It's, it's, or I should say, it's only catering to people who want big, massive equipment. The Big Bud from 17. Like, the, I love Big Bud. I love the idea of it. I, I know Landy's a big fan of the DLC. It's his favourite. But I thought it was very niche. I thought it was too niche because it, like, it only focused on huge massive equipment and not everybody's gonna like that you know I think and the community keeps bringing it up as an idea and I'm gonna keep bringing it up as an idea is a classics DLC for goodness sake bring out a full-on classics DLC with maybe just one bit of equipment from every brand in the game You'll have a massive DLC, you'll have one that everybody's going to be happy with, because there's at least one piece of equipment that they're going to want in the DLC. Yet not going gangbusters trying to get all of the classic champions, just have one. Just have one piece of... Just one tractor. From John Deere. One tractor from New Holland. One tractor from Case IH. One tractor from Valtra. One tractor from Massey Ferguson. One tractor from every brand gets you a really big classics DLC. And then you can add in possibly even lizard equipment. People will be fine with it because the, the tractors are the headline acts. The Ford wouldn't happen because I don't think Ford Motor Company would be willing to give Giants a license. It might now, now that Giants of the Cloud that they do. But I don't think it's... I don't think they have the clout to get Ford Motor Company involved. Or the money. Which is the problem with the, the Ford DLC and Fords on consoles that people really want. And I get why they want them. I don't think it's going to happen just for financial reasons, effectively. Or DLC with new tractors come a couple of classic. Yeah. Like, myself and Landy, uh, speak on my own behalf here, I'm not going to speak on Landy's behalf, I'm really happy the class agreed to put the, um, the Mega into the DLC. Like, that's a classic harvester. That's something that everybody knows class 4. And it's great to see it in there, because, like, it shows the class aren't just in there to get in ahead of John Deere effectively. Or to try and one-up John Deere. It's, it's class one to be in because they want to be in. And sure, there's a fairly decent chance that trying to get a one-up on John Deere is the reason they got in... Yeah, the reason they decided to come in the first place. But the equipment they've given Giants and allowed Giants to do is... kind of interesting. There's a, like, the mix of a bit of everything, including old, and that's something that too many brands forget, is like, 
they're sure they're well known f because they're well known and they want to market their new stuff but how did they get where they are <laughs> how did John Deere get to where it is today how did class get to where it is today how did Massey Ferguson uh, New Holland case Fent Valtra um, Deutzfar Steyr all of these brands that are in Farmston, how did they get where they are today? They had tractors before. They had equipment before. They've got old equipment. Put it into the game. Show your history. Be proud of it. Embrace where you were before. Because people will remember the stuff that you used to do. And they'll applaud you for putting it into the damn game. It could be the Giants didn't want to ask for the old stuff, and I think that's a dumb idea if if that is the case. Because if Giants were to even have it as a DLC, they would make stupid money. They would make hilarious amounts of money. The key problem with trying to get the old stuff into the game is that the manufacturers are looking at their advertising budgets effectively and saying what's what's the most effective way we can get a return on this farm's investment and it's putting all the new stuff in and all the old stuff have all you see classics just old tractors old equipment let the manufacturers show their history let them show where they were where they came from how they got where they are today and whether it's giants being apprehensive about doing it or the manufacturers themselves, I think it's a, a, an amazing oversight that there isn't a, uh, a DLC of classic equipment. And there hasn't been since FS13. It's amazing. Hey, Mikey. You want to learn how to use Giant Center? Uh, have a look at... Uh, Shy Wizards Channel Diversity. Matt's DLC might have opened Giant's eyes to the popularity of classics. Because um, from what I've heard, they weren't expecting it to do very well, and it, it kind of stunned them. Um, <laughs> it, it did a lot better than anybody had expected. Welcome back, Jack. So that might have been, you know, a wake-up call for Giants. And yeah, the problem with the classics in FS13 was it was hideously small stuff. That's the problem with going back too far. Like... Even the base game maps were a bit too big for the, the FS13 classics. I loved them, but even the base game maps, they were too small for even starter equipment in most cases. Um, I'd love if Giants revisited the idea and brought out an accompanying map that was very small. Or even like an edit to one of the base game maps that turns it into like the 1960s or something. Back to the 80s. Back to the 80s would be fantastic. Or even like the mid to late 70s. Like the, the biggest issue with the original classics DLC, the old timer DLC, uh, for 13 and I think it came out again in 15 as like a, a mod pack, wasn't the the equipment was, was too small, it was that the tractors were very underpowered. Like, if they brought out the same DLC today with 100 horsepower tractors instead of like 60 or 70, they'd, they'd work with most equipment. You could make it work. Problem is they didn't, and it didn't. Class equipment expansion would be something special. If done right, if it was if, if it's done like the same way it was in 13, it wouldn't work very well. If it was done 
with more powerful classics or more recognizable classics than the German and Swiss brands that were chosen, um, I think it would do a lot better today. Just my opinion, though. I could very easily be wrong about that. Very easily be wrong. Don't think I am, but I could be. Is the Torian any good? I haven't really had a go at it. it. Like I like how it looks. I like how it sounds. Um, and it functions it, great. But the the rear exhaust is memes. Like, where is it? It has a bloomin' rocket launcher on the back. Like that exhaust is just straight up a rocket launcher. Oh no, it's something again. Hey, Mikey. Or Dal, or even. Blah. My farmyard looks reasonably tidy or Yeah, that's because all the equipment is actually not in the yard. Um, and hello, NHF. The yard looks tidy because there's nothing in it. So, question for you guys. Because. I don't want to get into a situation where I need to run a test map for this. Do the bales from the Heston pack, uh, do they work, <coughs> do they work with seasons? Because I want to give them a try, but I don't want to give them a try if I'm just going to lose all the bales. Yes, they do, says American Farmers Gaming. Are you sure? Oh, I want to be 100% sure before I even download the damn mod. Um, this is this is where I am right now. Do I prefer round bales or square? Square. Square bales don't derp out as much as round bales in farm sim. They're a lot easier to handle than that. Um, what mod? The Arm Team Heston Balers. The big balers from Arm Team. I'm concerned because they use what seem to be custom bales, um, and I know that historically Seasons hasn't worked very well with non-standard bales, so I'm just kind of, uh, the hell? I'm kind of being overly cautious with it. It's honestly not that I don't trust the baler, it's that I don't trust that Seasons will cope with it. Because I know how Seasons used to work. I'm going to put on a map that you're not playing and try a few. Yeah! Lenny mentioned about testing Heston Bales and Seasons. He said, like, you, Seasons. Yeah! He said that they didn't disappear, which would hint that they do work. Um, they might have changed the non-function failure state to just be that the bales don't disappear um, and don't rot, which would be interesting. You know how it works. Have you left them? through a growth transition American Farmers Gaming. Because um, they don't instantly disappear. It takes them until a growth transition to actually go pop. 
So, like, we'll swap from mid to late autumn, big growth transition, early to mid spring, that kind of stuff. It, it used to be the case that during a growth transition, all of the Hestons and non functional bales would uh, disappear. Grass Heston bales are on multiplayer. Interesting. Do I get ad revenue for my past streams? Yes. Anything on this channel that has ads on it, uh, I do earn ad revenue from. No, you're harvesting right now. Yeah, see, there's there's a problem, AFG. You can make the bales just fine. You always have been able to. But the failure mode is always that they disappear at the next growth transition. But if... Um, what a 40 gamer saying is true, and they rot on multiplayer, that means that they do work, or at least hints at it. Um, how's the stream today? More stable. <laughs> More stable than it was yesterday. But then again, a one-legged drunk man with no cane and no wheelchair is more stable than the stream was yesterday. Also, that one-legged drunk man is blind. Um... You think it's up to this night? You're not going to happen? That would be very highly appreciated. Um... On a boat, yes. Um... I would test it myself, except if I... So, you guys remember I said I I have a lot of stuff that I've been working on. I don't know if you can see just quite how thick this... This is about 20 sheets of refill pad paper that I have written on both sides, I think for all of them. Yeah, the entire thing is double... Oh no, there's one page that isn't double-sided. Um, this is what I've been working on for the last, like, week and a half. Um, also, I just want to, hopefully, <laughs> to be able to see this. Look at how fancy my handwriting looks! That's what I've been working on, and I'm actually planning on working on it again after the stream. Um. I was, uh, I've got a few things that I'd like to do with it tonight. Uh, what is it? Research for uh, another project. For my for the the working on my handwriting. No, I've been working on research. That's all notes. Um, it's for a channel that I'm setting up. That is going to be. Uh, me talking about science stuff. Something that I've been wanting to do since the start of the year and just kind of faffing about and half doing things and not doing things and partially doing things and putting things off. And I think with the way this channel is going and the fact that I've been ending more streams early lately, it's possibly for the best that I get this one, the other one running to see how that does. Um, plus, it's something for me to do in the evenings that isn't just chatting about doing nothing. Can I explain the science behind Flying Horse in FS19? Delvacity, believe it or not, yes. Uh, so the horse is in FS19. I happen to know how this all works. The, the horses in FS19 are actually coded to be people. They're actually coded using the same code as like the player characters. And they fly because it's collision detections kind of working weird. Um, where it's trying to put you above a collision. But because the collision is a tree, usually, um, it's trying to, it, it tries to put you on top of the tree collision. Which is why, if you zip into a tree just the right angle, you zip straight up it. Or, um, 
like we managed to do it multiple or a few times, we glitched horses into each other and they just launched up to the, the top of the map. Um, it's all down to collision detection. So, yes, I can explain the science behind flying horses. Do I know why in seasons when crop failure happens, I always seem to see these crop patches? That's crop chunks. It's crop chunks. Um, Farm Sim works on a, 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 a chunk system. Of, it's basically just the. Um, if you open up your map, you'll get like coordinates and stuff. It's using those coordinates on those squares are like one coordinate square. That was the wrong button. I thought I was just going to say crappy physics. It's actually very good physics. That's the funny thing. Like, I make fun of the... Uh, I, make, I make fun of Giants physics. It's all actually very good physics. It's just that because it's a game, the physics don't always... Be, because it's game physics. Game physics are very different from real world physics. For the most part. And um, it's quite funny trying to apply real physics to game physics. And it doesn't quite work out ever. Uh, right, I think, because I need to do some stuff around the house, including sweep, because I completely forgot to earlier. I think I'm going to call the stream here. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with Lone Oak. Tomorrow is going to be Lone Oak, I promise. Because um, I want to do a few things and get some stuff sorted and get working on things as well. I, would lot, I want to get done today. And uh... <laughs> I'm finishing early, so I've, I've landed SFTM and I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> I'll be back tomorrow with Lone Oak. Looks like SFTN is going to be streaming, so uh, go check him out if you haven't done so before. Until next time, stay safe and goodbye.